Hey guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Welcome, Cross Watchers. For those of you who are brand new to the channel, happy to have you join us. Yes, come into the in the comments. Let me know who you are, where you're tuning in from. I will come back later and uh, review the comments and give you a proper welcome, a proper hello. That's my plan. At least it's my birthday, so. Yay, I get to spend my birthday with you. And my that's my crazy cat, Leo. <laughs> He's in full tilt right now. If you hear any crash booms, it's okay. The, cat, the, the house is pretty much two-year-old cat proof, but he finds ways to up the ante all the time. Um, I'm pulling from healing waters to activate the reading. We're getting closer to the full moon in Pisces with a lunar eclipse, which means the south node is the eclipse energy, which is the past. So we'll be releasing energies from the past and we may need lots of healing to help us. Here we go. Ride the waves, life lessons and growth. You will get through this. Someone else got this card too. I love it. Ride the waves. You will get through this. Mm-hmm. And the other lesson is never turn your back to the waves. Never turn your back to the ocean. That was the first lesson I ever learned as a little girl living on the East Coast of the United States. It's the first thing you learn. <laughs> if you're going to the beach, never turn your back to the ocean. She is fierce. Okay, so I'm doing the um, soul contract tarot spread. I will pull the cards and then tell you the position of each card. And then we'll get details from the clarifiers to help explain. So here we go. The nature of your karmic soul contract has to do with... Um, your person's availability. The King of Wands often has to do with, um, you know, an unavailable lover or an available lover, someone who does not hesitate or someone who wants things on their terms. So that may be the nature of your soul contract and um, an important lesson. Your main lesson here in this contract is about, well, we have love and passion here, but for your part, the Queen of Cups is about empathy and compassion and sensitivity and open-heartedness, but not being a doormat. So I feel like I'm nailing it with the regard to the unavailable lover theme versus always being available when they are available. Does that make sense? Am I making sense here? Let me find a better way to say it. If someone um, wants you to be available when it's convenient for them, that's sort of the theme here. Um, and how do you negotiate that so that you're not a doormat and so that your um, emotions aren't all tied up in, you know, that aspect of when they're available, then you have to be available and what that tells you about yourself and how you internalize that and the emotional havoc that may wreak. Okay, so that's sort of overall what I feel I see coming through here. I could be off, we'll see. What you already know, um, right? What you're already aware of is that you have planted seeds of intention and that these things kind of take time to unfold more organically so that it requires some patience. A lot of my Sagittarian readings involve that p word <laughs> not the ugly p word but the patience word whether it's the seven of pentacles or whether it's temperance somehow i always come back to talking to my sagittarians about patience now your shadow work that's still needed mm -hmm. ten of swords so the ten of swords is usually about a painful ending something that's already kind of caught you by surprise thrown ten swords at your back Maybe for some of you didn't see it coming. Um, but if it isn't about the Ten of Swords that has already happened, it's some shadow work about concerns about the Ten of Swords that may yet um, come. So 
We've got Ten of Swords here in your shadow work. Let's look at past healing that you've already accomplished. So when we see the Three of Cups as something you've already accomplished, some healing, that could be about third party. And third party doesn't always have to be about a third person necessarily, but wherever there is something involved that takes your persons, it, so in other words, if you've got a King of, a king of Wands who's the unavailable lover, meaning they either have other obligations or there's some distance between you or um, they have their own past wounds, whatever it is that becomes that third energy between you, distance, obligations, an ex, maybe they're getting out of a marriage, whatever it is, that's what I'm feeling about this third party energy. So there's something here that you've um, come through successfully or you've healed, you've already accomplished it once. So you've got some receipts and it may not be the, the part of this connection that you need to heal going forward, but we're looking at the soul contract. So you've been up against something before and you've come through that and you've accomplished that. So that's what we're going to look at as evidence to support what you need to heal for, for the future. And so the last card is the final step on the healing journey that will signal you're either ready to cut cords in this connection altogether, or, and again, it's a reading for the collective, so you have to take it as it speaks to you. So either ready to cut cords totally, or complete this part of the soul contract and move on to the next phase of it in this connection, yeah. This final step will leave you feeling kind of self-satisfied. You know that Nine of Cups has this energy of, this feels good. I, I'm feeling good here. It isn't the Ten of Cups, notice that, but the Nine of Cups has this energy of wish fulfillment. Like all I wanted was this, and that feels good to me. There is healing energy in the Nine of Cups. There is balance in the Nine of Cups. There is a sense of, um, emotional self-satisfaction and that will be your signal okay it does not look like this at all okay so now that we have the general plot let's let's thicken it up a bit with some details for the clarifiers king of wands queen of cups queen of pentacles six of wands two of cups so i am feeling um, still some dynamics about um, life partnership, soulmate bond, something that happened, something that may have ended, but you're still in waiting mode. So for some of you, the third party is very likely uh, involving a person and this king of wands unavailable lover person may in fact be married or in a long-term committed connection whatever it's 2024 so I, I sort of I hate pigeonholing things um, but regardless the important lesson here is right how, how much do we work towards some form of reconciliation, which the Three of Cups can also be a card of reconciliation? You know, how much do you, do you kind of um, take a back seat, Queen of Cups? Because in her reversed energy, she's overly needy. She can become a doormat. She can be an empath to the degree where she has, where the lines are very blurred, that there's not there aren't good boundaries um, where she takes on too much um, and doesn't have enough. I want to be careful how I say this, where she loses her own sense of self, where there's too much enmeshment. Okay, so we know we have this connection here. And the Six of Wands can be about making peace and reconciliation and meeting in the middle and compromising and negotiating and all of that. But we have this third figure here, and I'm kind of getting the impression that's part of the soul contract may, may involve that this person, what you're here to learn, is about holding space for yourself 
And yes, being sensitive and compassionate and understanding and all that, but knowing how to hold space for yourself so that you're not enmeshed and then taking a back seat and um, giving over too much space to this person, to your king of wands, so that you're always on their timetable, right? Because it's the king of wands kind of coming through reversed. That the nature of this soul contract is that you're with somebody who's already with somebody else. That's what I'm seeing here. So if that is not your storyline, then this may not be your reading at this time, but it's pretty strong now, all the evidence here, all the cards coming out. Let's see the Seven of Pentacles, what you're already aware of. The moon, yeah, the high priestess, and the world. Um, you're aware that it may take, this whole situation may take time to unfold kind of organically, and you've probably set intentions around it. And you had a lot of fears, worries, insecurities, apprehensions, trying to trust your intuition, but there may be things you can't see and that you don't know. Because the moon is Pisces energy, which is all about intuition and the veil between the ethereal spiritual world and 3D. And the high priestess is the moon. Um, and also secrecy, things we can't see, but we need to kind of trust our inner knowing and our instincts on. And then there's the world. And the world card is Saturn. So Saturn is uh, the Lord of Karma, the great teacher. Um, and it's about lessons and, and cycles and, you know, what, we, what we're here to learn uh, and kind of what we need to, it's endings and then new beginnings. So almost as if you know that this is the ending of whatever this third party situation is, you know, that you have to wait for that cycle to kind of close out so that you and this person can have your new beginning. But there is some clear worry here around that. Um, and that's why your shadow work is the Ten of Swords. That on some level, um, you, you realize that it may not turn out favorably for you. So let's go there, shall we? Yeah. We may need to face the ultimate fear that we may be in for a painful ending and all of the um, despair that comes with that at the hands of this person who may do so in a very cool, detached, unemotional way. Underneath is the Knight of Swords. So the Knight of Swords is interesting in this position because I usually see that as the, you know, clean up on aisle five card. But the Knight of Swords also has a temper, also has anger, also has, you know, some capacity for cruelty. And because it's feeding into, from the bottom of the deck, feeding into the King of Swords, it's now showing me as a reader the less desirable qualities of the King of Swords. There's ruthlessness and cruelty here. So in your shadow and the shadow work you need to do is on this vision, right? Because this is, this is what you're aware of. You're aware like, yeah, this is gonna take some time, whatever this situation is, whatever this third party scenario is, you're aware, uh, Right, I'm trusting my intuition here, but I know there's an ending that's got to happen before we have our new beginning and it's going to take some time. And uh, I'm a little nervous and apprehensive and all my insecurities are being triggered. And in your shadow, it does not look good. Mm -hmm. Painful, devastating. So that's where you need to do some work to prepare for either, like you either have to work through it so that you release that fear or you have to uh, determine what the realities are. So 
past healing that you've already accomplished. Three of Cups, the star, there's healing. Eight of Cups, okay. So I, I sort of feel like um, you've already healed at one point. There's already been a reconciliation and a healing from uh, maybe this person has walked away before. Um, this is someone you consider and have um, confidence or a sense of being connected to past life soulmate energy, right? Like this is, I know you, I know who you are, I know you. Like I know you like I know you, but I, I've never met you in this incarnation. So this is a connection that sort of comes up out of nowhere and instantly feels intense. And so the third party scenario is one part of the Three of Cups, but the Three of Cups is also a reconciliation after sort of a departure. So there's a coming back together. And so this part of it can be a healing from the separation and the coming back together and how that feels so joyful after whatever time apart. So that can be happening in this incarnation, but it can also be the joy that was felt and the healing that you received after coming together in this incarnation, if that makes sense. For those of you who um, understand that sensation, who um, experienced that, that will speak to you. For those of you who have had a falling apart or a walking away just in this relationship and then a coming back together of some sort, then I'm speaking to that as well. It can go either way. But this is connecting to me personally as, uh, as a healing that you received just from the coming together in this incarnation with this person because I'm talking about a soul contract. So now the final step on the healing journey that signals you're either gonna cut a cord here, move on totally, or you've got some more healing to do um, so that you can ascend to the next phase of this soul contract. We have the Nine of Cups. Queen of Wands. Seven of Wands, Queen of Swords. Yeah, um, absolutely. Queen of Wands to the King. Sort of like he meets his match. Um, reclaiming your sense of personal power, uh, your self-efficacy, your like, no, I know who I am. Oh, 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 hell no. Mm -mm. This isn't about when it's convenient for you. I'm in this too. I have a say. So there's a little bit of a stepping back into your sense of inner authority. The seven of wands is pretty good because it's like stepping into it. The seven of wands can be about defensiveness and resistance. That's not what I'm picking up here. It's like taking a stand. It's a little self-protective sometimes, but in this case, the way it's coming through is, let me tell you how this is going to go. That's what I'm seeing here. And the self-satisfaction you get for sort of stepping in to make sure that your needs are accounted for, that you're that they're spoken to, that you, whoa, whoa. Right, like when I look at this, I'm, I'm feeling like a Will and Grace moment. <laughs> if you've ever watched that show, when Grace is like, whoa, <laughs> and that's what I'm feeling. It doesn't have to be intense or difficult. It's like, whoa, whoa. I'm here, no, no, this, I'm, I'm to be taken seriously. And that's healing in its own way because it may run counter to how you've been in this connection. So it's about stepping in, stepping forward, making sure that you're voicing, uh, no, no, this is, whoop. And underneath is a queen of swords, which I love because we have the queen to the king. And the king is part of your shadow work. So it's about finding your voice. And it is also about not needing to be high drama because the Queen of Wands can be high drama. It's about ooh, really getting 
crystal clear, laser focused, less is more with the words, being very level headed, very practical, very pragmatic, um, cutting to the chase. I like her in this setup because if needed, pff, right? She takes that sword and that's it. I cut this, it's done. So she's kind of on reserve. The cards from the bottom of the deck, in case you're new, are either in unconscious awareness, like in the psyche, or playing out behind the scenes. I feel like it's in the psyche, like it's on reserve. Because if I'm not taken seriously, I know I got backup. But the Nine of Cups is that sense of, yep, I stepped in, I claimed from my own sense of personal power how this has to be for me, and I knew I had backup. If that's not going to work, then I'm out. So very interesting reading for you, Sag. Um, kind of looks like a different version uh, of what I've been seeing for a while. So interesting. Let me take this to the extended. And before I give you the astrology, I'm going to tell you that I, what I want to look at in the extended is um, sort of how this person perceives you, right? The King of Wands, let's just call him the King of Wands. So I'm gonna look at how they perceive you, their feelings for you, their intentions toward you. What are they getting from you? Like what's, what's their buy-in? Um, physical fulfillment level, and in case you're too far apart, geographically, maybe the chemistry right and where is the whole connection headed so that's what i'm going to do in the extended the links to that are below i say that plurally because there's three different options for how to access the extended so please make sure when you click a link that you read about it so you know what you're getting um and before i give you the astrology if you are enjoying the readings if you're feeling some confirmation or you're getting some insight or awareness or just feeling validated um, and you have not yet done so, please subscribe below. That gives me the opportunity to stay here on this platform and continue to bring these messages. That's the energetic exchange. I bring the free message, you click the button. <laughs> okay, it doesn't cost you a thing. Um, the extendeds are optional. If you want a private reading, I do offer them. The links are also below to the booking page so you can check that out. That's what I have for you today. Okay, so the King of Wands is Leo. The Queen of Cups has Cancerian energy, Queen of Pentacles, Capricornian energy. Okay, the moon, as I said, is Pisces. Um, High Priestess is the moon. I know that sounds weird. And the world card is Saturn. That is Aquarius and Capricorn, King of Swords, Aquarian energy. Knight of Swords is Gemini. This star is more Aquarian energy. And the Queen of Wands here is Aries. And the Queen, I oh, love all the Queens are here. The Queen of Swords is um, Libra. That's what I have. I'm headed to the extended. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.